Hey guys, we're back with another video. So I thought we'd do a little bit of room world today. So basically, I'm gonna show you guys a really simple, easy to make beginner base for default room world. So crash landed, Cassandra Claire, losing is fun. If you want to go for one that difficult, we could probably do a lot easier like adventure or strive to survive blood and dust, etc., etc. But they're all gonna be the same. It's a really easy, simple to do beginner startup and you only need a few things to do it. No mods at all. I've only got the DLCs enabled because you know, I got the DLCs, I spent a bit of money. And yes, yeah, so I'm gonna do quickly do Cassie, losing is fun, reload anytime. You don't have to do it on losing is fun. I think the generic mode is strive to survive or adventure story if you want to, but I just, I just like the threat of imminent death. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And yeah, the first few things I would recommend is re-roll for some good characters. You want a colonist that is good at construction you want a colonist that is good at mining and you want a colonist that at least has semi-decent cooking and planting ability and it's gonna make this starter base super, super easy. So I'm just gonna pick a generic area, doesn't really matter where, we'll just do like, um, I think a good easy location, just default we'll pick uh, just somewhere around. I'll just re-roll re till I find something nice. Uh, let's just pick, that'll do, we'll pick here, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of near a road, so it's fine. So I always like having the large map, again this is completely preference, if you want to have the large map or not, that's just how I do it. I'm gonna have to pick, I'm gonna just play classic because not everyone has the ideology DLC and not everyone has the royalty DLC, so I'm just gonna do the classic religion. And this is where we start re-rolling, which is always fun. So you're gonna wanna find someone who's not terribly inept, but is also semi good at what you want. So this person, again, this person's not too bad. They are lazy, they're pacifists, but they're great at growing plants and they're good at construction. Not the best to be a pacifist, but we can do it for now. Now we want someone who's semi decent at mining. Again, there's someone who's good at mining, but she does have an injury, uh, not too bad though. She's good at mining, 10 in mining is actually great. So now we want someone who's good at construction, probably the easiest one to find. Okay, right, so I think we've got our three colonists. We've got this lovely lady who is a pacifist, unfortunately, but we'll have to make do. But she's got great planting, pretty good medical and decent construction. This one, again, they're not the best, but they've got 10 in mining, which will be fantastic. And this woman here, again, not the best, but she's got some relatively decent stats. She's got good in social, good in shooting, and she's got four in construction. Now, four in construction is the minimum I would recommend because that's what you need to build things like windmills and a lot of power sources early on. So we're gonna just start with these three. We're not gonna do any other changes. We've got no mods on, so it'll be a pretty basic way to start, and I'll show you a good way to start off the game and a good starter base that you can build for three colonists. This is the map. Now, before anything, you want to turn this on here, which shows fertility overlays, and you want to turn on this because it just it's really handy to have them automatically build things that are destroyed. So what you want to do is you want to have a little scan around the map and look for good locations where there's a lot of greenery that you can grow. Now, this is actually looking like a pretty decent area to start off with. And once you've kind of had a nosy around it where the greenery is, that's unfortunate, it's right on the edge of the map, you want to turn it off and then you want to look for these because these are fantastic power sources later on. They can be sources of heat and energy and everything that you want in life. Now, unfortunately, there aren't really any here. So this location isn't as good as it first looked. Um, there's actually not many of these vents on the map. A lot of them are on the edge, which is very unfortunate. This map isn't the best to start. There's an ancient danger. Let me see. There's one there. One there. Yeah, unfortunately they are all on the edge of the map, so it looks like I am probably gonna just have to make do without them, which really sucks because they're really good power sources later on. I'm just, there's one there and one there. So it looks like these are the only two usable ones in the pretty much the entire vicinity, which could work. Worst case scenario, we'll have to expand out to get to these later, but I am probably gonna start building the base here because it's near the green areas. And yeah, I mean, 
just happens. Sometimes you get a good roll on a map, sometimes you get a bad roll on a map. It's it's all down to luck. That one's not too bad. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna build the base here since we're already here as it is, and I will show you guys the way to build this base. Right, so now like we've crash landed. Boom. You're gonna wanna, oh, so now I will show you the base. So you're gonna wanna do a square, make it out of wood for starters, because that's what we've got. We're gonna do a square, I'm trying to think, how do I wanna put it here or here? Hmm. I'm gonna build it here because I want the kitchen to be this side and then I can change it later on as I need to. I like to plan things out quite a lot. I'm a very heavy planner. So we're gonna to wanna to do 10 like this. And then we're gonna to wanna to do 13 down. So it'll be 12 down. And you're gonna to wanna to do it this way as well. And this way. So if you see the zone, it's 10 by 13, which is what we want. And then you're gonna very quickly just make some bedrooms like this this and you put doors in there there and there so now they've got the bedrooms done I know they're small bedrooms I will be expanding them later but this is basically the best way to do it and then you're gonna want to put a door I personally would like to put a door here because it just makes building if you want to do defenses later on like quick little quick little defenses against early raids like this it just it just makes it easier in my opinion but that's that's down to personal preference it doesn't really matter too much where you put the door and yeah, so this is what we've got so far. I'm gonna very quickly set their work schedules. You wanna put them all on one for these. I personally like putting them on one for hauling and cleaning because I like keeping the base tidy. But again, that's personal preference. You're gonna wanna put whoever's the plant cutter slash construction, you're gonna wanna put them all to priorities cook again is going to have to be priority done and then that way they're going to do a bit of cleaning but if they don't have to clean they're going to prioritize building which is what you want building and mining and so we need to quickly because you will run out of materials very fast first few things after you set that up is then set steel to be mined we're going to need lots of steel guys so make sure all the steel around this little building you've built is being mined same with trees. You want to chop all the trees down. You want to have a nice deforestation event occurring. So you're going to hopefully have one person building, one person mining, and the other person will be chopping down trees. Very important. We don't have to worry too much about getting food right this second because we are playing on Crash Landed. There's plenty meals available. And this is how it's going to go. I don't know where she is. Ah, there you go. So now you just got to kind of let them do their thing. I've got it on times three speed because, I don't know, it feels really slow if I put it like this. I I cannot play RimWorld anymore without it being on times three speed, unless it's for a specific reason. Just letting them do their thing. Just having a break. Of course you are. Gonna quickly set some beds down. You wanna put some beds in as well, obviously, so they have bedrooms done then. And yeah, perfect, getting somewhere. I'll uh, probably speed this up a little bit for you guys so I can show you when they're done doing what they need to do. Okay, she didn't quite finish building the bedroom, so I'm gonna just force her to finish the bedrooms real quick. And they all have somewhere to sleep. Okay, so let's just draft this guy and then he can go to bed as well. I mean, this is just the shell. We're not done yet, guys. Be prepared. So what you're gonna want to do now is very quickly do a stockpile zone. Just do like a, a three by three. I kinda like doing three by three. I mean, or four by four, I think is better. Doesn't matter overly, you just want a little stockpile area. Sorry, my nose is really itchy. You just want a little stockpile zone for everything because you want to make sure they start putting all these materials inside. If they're left outside, they will decay, especially the meals. Packaged survival meals last a while, but they will decay much faster if you leave them outside, so don't do it. And then what you're going to want to do, very simple, build a table right here and put some chairs down. 
colonists in this game get really miserable if they don't have a table to eat their food at. So you gotta you gotta prioritize building a table for these guys. They're very miserable without one, and it's just not worth it. You need a table down ASAP. Another very important thing early on is a research bench. So we're going to put a research bench in as well. You're going to have to get on that soon because there are a few things that are very essential early. My bunny is destroying things in the background. I do apologize. Now we've got quite a lot of wood chopped, so now that we've got a nice little resource of wood and steel, I'm going to very quickly start doing growing zones. Now I personally like to have growing zones ready to be turned into hydroponics and everything later on down the line. So a very simple way to make a growing zone that's easy for sun lamps is you do, uh, I think I'm going to have to, I'm trying to remember where my kitchen is. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna have to do a nice 11 by 11 square. Best way to remember it, boom. Now, how you grow food is different to everyone. I know some people who like to do small four by four squares and they'll have all the different foods available and that's how they do it. They'll do like one of each thing. I personally don't like doing that. So it's up to you how you grow things as long as you grow them quick enough so you don't have to have no food by the time you run out of these packaged survival meals, it's fine. I personally like doing them this way. So what you wanna do is you wanna go three like this and then two up or down, depending on, simply because this is the size of a sun lamp and I like having them ready for sun lamps in the future. And then that's it, nice and easy. Now, you have to take into consideration what you want to grow. So corn, takes the longest to grow but it has the highest yield so it can be very beneficial in this case because we have meals already planned and we can get a head start on the corn growing without having to be overly hungry potatoes are kind of in the middle they have relatively good yield uh, but they grow kind of average there's not anything super special about them. A lot of people do them as a good medium simply because you don't have to harvest them all the time and they are not as long to grow as corn. So I do use potatoes quite a lot as well. And then there are rice plants. Now rice plants, they grow very quickly. And especially on fertilized ground, they're probably the best to use on fertilized soil, in my opinion, which is this dark brown stuff, simply because of how quickly they grow. But the the negative side to that is that your workers, your gardeners especially, will be harvesting them all the time. So they do take up quite a lot of time in terms of consuming. But if you've got someone just dedicated to planting, then it's actually very good to use them. And the small yield compared to the time it takes to grow them definitely is balanced out. So it's up to you, Percy. I'm gonna go for corn in this case, simply because it's not overly fertilized ground and I have lots of time because I've still got like 35 meals basically between these colonists. There's quite a few days left of food and I can always go out hunting if I need to. I just, I don't mind using corn. Corn's pretty decent. And if you want to also, you can do a couple of small growing zones like this for things like heel root, which is very important, and cotton, again, is another important one because you're gonna need cotton to start growing plants and everything. So this is how I'm personally building it. You can, you can change this up however you want to. Growing is complete preference. It's not all about being super efficient with growing. This is just how I like doing it. You could do it this way, you can do it a different way. Doesn't matter too much. Now this is where things can differ a little bit. I personally like putting butcher tables outside just because they make a lot of mess. I don't like having them inside, especially early. That really can debuff your colonists if you have negative blood everywhere essentially. And I like to put the electric stove inside because that's not nearly as messy and keeping them separate also helps prevent food poisoning. It risks uncleanly cooking. So have them separate like this. And then you've got a nice little spot here to butcher any creatures that you need to kill, whether it's for clothes or for meat or anything. And then you have an electric stove where you can start cooking more food. 
Um, but to get this electric stove to work, you're gonna have to build a windmill. So let me very quickly just go to power and I'm gonna stick a windmill down here. I will probably be getting rid of this in the future because I'm not a big fan of windmills. Hmm, do I wanna put it that side or that side? Probably this side is easier because there's nothing in the way. So I probably will get rid of the windmill eventually. I don't like having windmills late game. They're kind of taking up a lot of space and you can change it for better power sources. Now, you can put more growing zones here as well because trees will block. Trees will block your windmill from working. So you can either, it doesn't matter what you put here, whatever you want. You can either put flooring down, like for example, concrete or paved tiles. It uses a lot of steel, but it's up to you. It doesn't look overly nice in my opinion. Anything that will stop trees from growing, you want to put in these two squares. Now I just set them as more growing zones because they will automatically chop trees down that are in growing zones. And it's just, it's easy, more food. More food is always better for me. I'm not too bothered, I like my meals. But you're gonna need to build power cables and connect that up here, easy. Once you get the power cables done, you're gonna have this connected, done. Perfect. All right, now this is where it gets interesting. If you want to add anything to this, you can do something like a kitchen. Kitchens are great to do. Now, I do my kitchens a very specific way every time. I always like to have my kitchen section facing away from storage because I want these to be closer to the food, as in the growing section. And I don't want people walking through them a lot because the more times people walk through them, the more chance of it getting dirty and the more chance of food poisoning occurring. So I always build it this way. And I will always put double doors in like this because it helps retain heat and that way, if anyone needs to access the food storage, which is in here, then they can go through this door, grab the food, come back out and eat. They don't have to go through the kitchen, through here, grab the food and then back through this way. I just, I don't like a lot of pathways of people running around here because you want them to be prioritizing them to be kept clean because that's how you get food poisoning. This is just my personal preference. Again, it's however you want to do it. This is how I do it. And then that way this can just eventually become the large recreational area. And that's pretty much your starter base done. If you wanna see some more of this colony and watch them progress, then let me know. I'll show you how I do a bit more in-depth planning in the next video if you're interested. And thanks so much for watching, really. I'll see you, I'll see you next time, guys. Until then, bye.